Thank you so much for joining us today. Whether you're an emerging founder or investor, myself and Sydney here, who we'll introduce shortly, are going to talk to you about finding resources to get you on your way. In addition to that, we're going to share a little bit about the SVB in Black VC partnership, which we're so excited about and can't wait to share more information, but really want to spend today's session using our time and knowledge about the innovation economy to best help you and point you guys in the right direction. And so with that, I have the pleasure of introducing Sydney Sykes, co-founder of Black VC. In addition to being the co-founder of Black VC, Sydney is also a Lightspeed Venture Partner Scout, was featured on the Forbes 30 Under 30 list, and has many, many other accomplishments, which I will let her talk about. So Sydney, to you. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I'm so excited to be here. Um, as Vanessa said, I'm the co-founder of a nonprofit called Black VC that's focused on empowering and supporting Black investors and increasing Black representation in venture capital. I'm also a Lightspeed Scout, which means I invest in generally seed and pre-seed consumer companies um, that are looking for really early, maybe first rounds of funding, um, helping them get off the ground by investing on behalf of Lightspeed. Um, in addition to that, I'm currently at Stanford Business School, uh, finishing up my MBA. So trying to balance all of that, but really excited to be here talking about how we can support emerging founders and emerging investors. So multi-talented to say the least. We're very excited to have Sydney here with us today and a little bit about my background. I've been at Silicon Valley Bank for a little over three years working with early stage founders, helping them grow and scale. And so SVB, really, we sit at the center of the innovation economy, working with founders, investors, funds. And so that's why I'm really excited for us to share all the insights that we have here today. And I think a great way to start would be, you know, Sydney, if you want to just give a general overview of what Black VC is. Yes. So Black VC, as I said, is a nonprofit. And what we do is we provide resources and communities to support existing Black investors, giving them the tools and the community they need to succeed in this industry. And then we also have programming and initiatives to increase the representation of new Black investors. So that means creating more Black investors. Right now, the industry, um, Black investors are about 3% of all investors, which is really, really poorly represented. Uh, we're hoping to change those numbers, not just because we think Black people deserve a seat at the table, but we also think for the future of venture capital to be um, a strong and prosperous, prosperous industry, it needs to represent the, the founders and the customers and the economy um, that it's serving. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And that's one of the reasons we're so excited at SVB to have the honor to be working and partnering with you guys. And so just a little bit of housekeeping for today's session. You know, Sydney has given us a great overview of Black VC. We'll talk to you a little bit more about SVB. Then we'll walk through understanding the problem as well as our partnership strategies, resources for founders, and how to stay connected. So Sydney, how does Black VC go about creating change in the innovator slash investor ecosystem? There's a couple different ways we approach it. Um, I'll start with the side of increasing uh, the representation of Black investors, so increasing the number of Black check writers. Another way of thinking about that is getting more hands in the dollars of Black investors. Sorry, getting more yep. dollars in the hands of Black investors. Um, and so we have several different programs. We have some programs that are focused on people who are junior in their career, trying to break into venture, giving them the skills and early education they need. We have another great program in, in collaboration with um, UC Berkeley um, and Salesforce that's focused on executives. And these are people who are a little bit further in their career and they might become angel investors, they might become scouts like myself, um, or they might even enter venture at say a principal or a partner level. Um, and there the community and the education is really important as well. Um, and then we also have a most recent program um, called the Black VC Scout Network, which takes scouts who are in the venture industry, who are scouts for 
um, Sequoia or Necessary Ventures or Lightspeed or Excel. Um, and we bring them together as a community to share deals, to think about and get education on how to support their portfolio companies um, and to think about how to um, really write checks that can have a meaningful impact um, that they're looking for. So those are three of the programs. We we have a few others that are, you know, have had a really great impact and have actually led to, to people getting into venture, people breaking in. Um, and then we also have initiatives and support for existing Black investors. And that's actually really where we started. Um, me and my co-founder, Fred, met back in maybe 2016 or 2017 when we were both early in our careers in venture. We were both um, the only Black investors at our firm, which is true for, uh, I think, like 95% of Black investors in the industry. Um, and we were both trying to figure out how do we succeed in our careers. We wanted to build a support system around ourselves. Um, and so we started just with one dinner in San Francisco um, at my old firm's office. And there was so much demand coming just out of that dinner that we ended up creating this this whole organization focused on supporting black investors like ourselves and making sure that there was a greater representation of people like us in the future. I, I love that. And I think one thing that we always encourage founders to do is really think about, you know, who's on your cap table. You're giving someone the opportunity to do that and to be very intentional about who you're choosing. And unfortunately there hasn't been, you know, many Black VCs historically to choose from. So I'm so excited about what you and your group are doing to also give founders that choice to say, I also want to start my business and be successful at the same time, creating wealth for the community that we care about. Totally. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with SVB or Silicon Valley's bank, this is just a high level overview of how we work with companies within the innovation economy. And so our mission really is to build a more diverse, equitable, and accessible innovation economy for all. And so this partnership is one of the ways that we're doing that. But we really are thinking about, you know, access to pipeline, access to information, access to networks, and access to capital, and how all of these pillars in turn are, you know, affecting the investors that we're working with, founders, pernols, innovation economy companies. And so one of the things that I'm really grateful for at SVB is we're really looking at a larger, bigger picture and understanding how funding and representation affects all these different categories. And so we'll talk a little bit more about our access to innovation program later, but one of the few things that I'm really excited to share is, you know, we're thinking through how can we connect diverse professionals to innovation economy companies. So, you know, if you guys know of any companies that who are hiring, we have a great professional network. We have an awesome partnership with Valence as well. That's something definitely feel free to reach out to myself about, you know, we're thinking through sponsoring fellowships and internships at some of these firms. I'm super excited. Um, we This past summer, we had some really great interns, a lot of which who at SVB converted to full-time or converted to some of the portfolio companies that we work with. So that's so exciting to see their journey and how they're growing within the innovation economy. And then creating pathways for those who have been historically overlooked and, you know, thinking about what Sydney had mentioned before, we understand that, you know, there are organizations and people who really are subject matter experts on this. And so we don't want to start from the ground. We want to work with those people who are like Sydney, like her team at Black VC, really to partner with them on the best way we could help do that. And so I'm super excited about that. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on is how we're going to provide programming tools and resources. So one thing I'm really excited about is all this data that we're seeing, a lot of it, you know, from the past few years, what can we do with that data and how can we leverage that data to better understand rep 
underrepresented groups within the ecosystem and really figure out the best way to support them. And so some of the things that we all, all are already doing and are continuing to do is we're going to facilitate connections, offer coaching, networking, and leadership opportunities, as well as expand our reach into these underrepresented communities. And then the piece that we're all most <laughs> excited about is access to capital. And so what are we going to do to truly help move that needle for a lot of founders? And so that's going to look like a few different ways. One, we're going to connect founders and investors to additional sources of capital. So for founders, that's investors in first of these emerging funds, those are your LPs or limited partners. And then we're going to invest specifically ourselves in companies, founders, and funds led by underrepresented groups. So that's SVB Capital, who would be doing the investing on that side. And then the goal of this truly is just to increase the funding that gets to the hands of underrepresented groups. And so looking through these four pillars, really excited about the impact that we're going to create for all of these groups here. And as I move to the next slide, Sydney, if you want to just talk a little bit about, you know, why, what are the goals of Black VC and talk about some of this data? Right. Um, the data is, is an incredibly interesting problem. Uh, when you hear about data, sometimes you think about it as just kind of facts. But the truth yes. is venture capital has been a private industry for so long that there's actually not much data um, or not much accurate and reliable data on what venture capital actually looks like as an industry, especially when it comes to race and diversity. Um, there's been a couple good surveys in the past. Um, I, I think the best survey would be the uh, NVCA and Deloitte survey. Um, but even that, I think this year it had 300 plus 330 firms or so, which is incredible. Um, but there's thousands of venture capital firms in this industry. And so part of the goal is understanding how deep is the problem? Right now, we know that there's no more than 3% of uh, black, of investors in the industry are black. Um, but we wanna drill down on what does the black experience really mean in venture? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later because it uh, relates to our partnership with SVB. Um, but our goal for now as black VC is to increase the representation of Black investors. And, and what does that look like, actually? By 2024, we're hoping to double the number of Black investors. Uh, but in the long run, our goal is constantly equal representation. We think that venture capital should be just as diverse as the U.S. economy, as the U.S. demographics. Um, and that means we're going to have to increase the representation of Black investors by several fold. Uh, it's going to require monumental changes in the industry, um, but I think the demand from, from the population is there. I think the demand from investors in there, and definitely the demand from entrepreneurs for diverse investors who have different representations and different expectations and experiences in the world, that's going to be really important. Yeah, no, I love that. And as I'm thinking through timing and team, I have to say, you know, you and your team, I think there's, you know, we're so excited about this group helping to solve this problem and working on it. And I think, you know, the background and insights that you've experienced is truly, truly valuable. And so, you know, talk to us a little bit about, you know, why you guys have access to all this data and you're the perfect, you know, position to do this. What does Black VC do? Talk to me a little bit about, you know, some of the educational programs, chapters, things like that. Of course, I, I think you asked an interesting question at the start, which is how does Black VC get access to this data? Because we, we have created our own data. I think venture capital as an industry for a long time has been about trust. And that is just as true in the Black venture community. Um, we have spent a lot of time as ourselves, Black investors, building up relationships, building up trust, but also relating to the experience of other Black investors. And so when we go out to pursue data, it's, it's not going to be data just for data's sake. It's going to be about 
representing the experience of black investors. Um, and I think part of what that trust comes from um, is from the experience we've tried to create for other black investors and aspiring black investors. So like you mentioned, we have several educational programs. Um, I mentioned a few of them earlier. They're very much focused on creating curriculum and training, but also developing those relationships. So each of our uh, our programs has mentorship components that have led to really strong relationships that have led to jobs. I have some incredible mentors in my life that have come through the Black VC community that are either on the Black VC board or who have been speakers at, at our programs and involved in those initiatives. We also have several initiatives that are a little bit different from our program. So one is this data initiative we're going to talk about a bit later. That's about figuring out what is the, what is the true experience of a Black venture investor. Um, and also understanding how does the representation of Black investors relate to the overall venture ecosystem and venture economy. Uh, we also work a lot on content and creating community through um, our different media resources. So our Slack channel has more than a thousand members. I think it's close to a thousand five hundred right wow. now. Yes, it's incredible. It's a great community for people to chat, make connections, um, build up their network. And we try to integrate all of this. So even though they're different programs and different initiatives, they're all tied to the same goals around trust, community, and education. Yeah. And, you know, I, speaking for the both of us, I feel like we already know how important it is to invest within these communities and our communities and we see the impacts but I'm so excited about this report I've already known experienced and seen firsthand how profitable investing in black founders black funders and black businesses is not just for the black community but overall and so I'm just just excited that we're finally going to be able to have the data to show people that as well. And so really, that is one of the reasons that we wanted to partner with your team. And so thinking through a little bit, I would love to talk more about our access to innovate innovation program. And so our mission is to build a more diverse and equitable and ac accessible innovation economy for all. And so these are some of the ways that we're thinking of doing that. And, you know, Sydney touched on some of this before, but I really want to take the moment to highlight, you know, what an incredible organization it, this is and ways that you can get involved. Yeah, on the mentorship side of things, um, this is so important. Venture is a relationship-based industry, and that's also true for entrepreneurship and tech in general. Um, for us, each of our programs has had a mentorship component in the past, but now we're actually getting ready to roll out a larger mentorship component for, for venture investors across the industry. Um, if we think about why mentorship is important, I think there really are tangible analogies that come to mind. Each of us has had this in our life. Each of us has had mentors who have gone the extra mile. Um, when I think about a really great example, there's um, a guy in our programs, a young man in our, in our, uh, who created one of our programs. And he first got in touch with Black VC when it was getting off the ground. And this was before we had any programs to help um, Black investors. Uh, or sorry, Black aspiring investors. Um, but he was really eager to break into the industry and eventually he helped us create our Breaking Into Venture program. He has been not just a, a mentee to members of our community, but he's also gone on to serve as a mentor to members of his program. And that's led to jobs, it's led to relationships. Um, and so I'm really excited to roll out this initiative on a broader level, um, since we all know mentorship can have such a big impact on, on future relationships and jobs. Yeah, no, I'm so excited about that. And talk to me a little bit. I know it's been tough during the pandemic, but networking opportunities and for people to get involved with the community. Yes, the pandemic has been really tough. I'd say before the pandemic, Black VC was a almost entirely in-person organization. Uh, and so when the pandemic happened, we just needed to pivot and think about how do we create these relationships online. And so I encourage everyone who's watching this to sign up for our newsletter, see some of those great virtual events. Um, but also now that it's becoming more safe to interact in larger groups, 
we're really hoping to generate these regional communities, or should I say strengthen these regional communities. Um, we have six regional communities, um, one of which is the San Francisco chapter, which is having an investor event very soon. We also have New York and LA, which already had investor events early this month. Chicago has an investor event later this month. So we're ex so excited to get off the ground that we're, we're, we're jumping back into things full throttle. Um, but of course, considering the safety of the moment as well. Um, but we're really excited to be getting everyone back in person and to be bringing these networks together again in a meaningful way. Definitely. And one of the things that, you know, when we were thinking about this partnership and discussing, I love Sydney kind of for everyone to see the behind the scenes of one of the questions that you asked SVB about impact. Do you want to yeah. share? Yes. Um, I, we think about this a lot for Black VC. So it really came from a question of just curiosity as, as a large organization that's doing a lot in the space. How do you guys think about measuring impact um, with everything you're doing? Yeah. And one of the ways that thinking back to the slide that I had mentioned before, those four pillars and really using those four pillars to ground us in how we're thinking through moving forward through things. And so that's really how we're thinking about things. One of the things that, you know, I'm very excited about specifically is really focusing on the founders and the investors. So we truly wanna propel the next generation of black Latinx women investors. And so I think the impact for us also, you know, aside from all the data and all these data points is really talking to our community and talking to people like yourself and people who we know are already doing the work and have been doing the work for years on really just benchmarking how are we doing is this a tangible impact for founders is it a tangible impact for investors, how are we really moving the needle? And so we're going to be focusing on access to pipeline, access to information, access to network, and access to capital. And so those are the specific things we're going to measure. But aside from that, I think we're going to stay very connected to thought leaders like yourself, other people who are very knowledgeable about the space, just to gut check us and make sure that we're headed in the right direction. And I'm excited about all the things that we've already done at SVB to get us to this point, but really truly excited about, you know, working together and what this partnership means for the future. So we have a lot to learn. We're excited to learn. And I think it's really going to be super impactful for founders, as well as for um, investors and everyone in the ecosystem as well. Yeah, I think it um it all really that mindset and the way that you have done in the past is really informing this partnership of the black uh the black venture survey, which is really a comprehensive survey to understand what is the yeah I mentioned this a bit earlier what is the experience of the black investor what does the data actually look like being a source of truth for understanding the demographics of venture especially within the black ecosystem, uh, and so I think it'll be a really meaningful partnership to combine the work that we've done in the past, as well as the impact evaluation that you guys have honed and, and just talked about. So I'm excited to see this partnership come together. Definitely. And so for those that want to stay connected to Black BC, I know you touched on the newsletter, but what's the best way for people to get information from you? Two best ways. Actually, let's put three out there, three best ways. One, definitely the newsletter that's going to have all of our events. Um, it's going to have uh, information about jobs. It's going to have information about content we're working on. Just really great stuff there. Of course, I say that. Um, two would be our Slack. That's going to be where the heart uh, of our community is. Um, it is both a combination of Black venture investors, there's specific Slack channels for those to talk about the issues that they're struggling with, get help um, on their careers, or just figure out what events that they can attend that are really interesting, or even to share deals. Um, but it's also going to have resources and jobs for aspiring Black investors. So it's a really great place for both aspiring and existing Black investors to connect. 
And then the third way would be our social media. Um, you're going to find great tidbits, especially on our LinkedIn and our Twitter. Um, they're going to have clips from, or they do have clips from our past events. It's also going to have information about future events, as well as everything going on in the Black venture and tech ecosystem. So take a look at that as well. That's a great way to stay in contact with us. It's a great way to know about what's going on and it has everything you need to know. Yeah, wonderful. And for SVB, please make sure you subscribe to our Access to Innovation newsletter. That's where we'll be posting updates about a lot of the things that we talked about before and those metrics that we're looking to achieve. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at SVB Financial. And so I know we have a little bit of time here. And so I wanted to just spend some time. I know we talked a lot about what we're doing and how we're going to do it. But, it, you know, I'd be remiss if while I had Sydney here, I didn't get some additional information. So, Sydney, I, you know, just walk me through a little bit about, you know, what you're seeing as an investor and what you're excited about for the next year. It's a really interesting time for investing, um, largely because of the pandemic and the changes that have happened over the past year and a half. Yeah. So I'd say before that, venture was growing at an incredibly fast clip. Um, but then we got into this environment during the pandemic where there was just so much uncertainty. And uncertainty is awful in some ways. We saw a lot of people's lives being damaged. We saw a lot of really challenging situations in the economy. But we also saw some people taking advantage of that uncertainty and to start businesses, to get out of their comfort zone, to uh, take advantage of an environment where there were new and nuanced needs, and especially in the Black community and for Black women, we've seen more entrepreneurs coming out of the Black women community than ever. Um, I'd say some of the interesting trends are on the consumer side, especially where I focus, are you're seeing a lot more customers looking for businesses that relate to them specifically. You used to hear about mainstream and mass markets. But I think there's a lot more focus today on niche markets. Yeah. You don't want to buy just the shoes that everyone else is wearing. You want to buy the shoes that tell everyone else a little bit about yourself, that tell you what you care about, that make you look different, make you stand out. You don't want to be the girl at the prom wearing the same dress as everyone else, but in everyday life. So I think that's a really interesting development in the consumer economy. Also, because we're seeing so many new consumer businesses and so many new small businesses popping up in the past year and a half, we're also seeing a lot more demand for tools for small businesses. Some are calling it business in a box. Um, that would be kind of the Shopify for everything. How do I um, yep. turn my passion into a new business? How do I reach more customers? How do I become a creator? How do I become an influencer? How do I work at a job that's 10x better than the, you know, the gig economy job I was doing before or the McDonald's job I was doing before. So I think these, what we're seeing are all trends related to people taking more control in their life and demanding more from the businesses they work with, as well as the businesses that serve them. I, I love that. I love that. And so what have you seen is the, and I want to, you know, do both sides of the coin here. The biggest mistake from investors and the biggest mistake from founders? There's so many. There's so many. I'll start <laughs> on the investor side of things because that's how yeah. I think about it. I think the biggest mistake we see from investors that I'm hoping we're getting out of this trend a little bit is only believing that something can work if you've seen it before. Which yeah. if you hear it said like that right now, you're like, that's crazy. Why would any investor do that? Nobody wants to invest in an Amazon competitor or an Apple competitor. But the truth is, a lot of investors are really risk adverse. They're trying to create returns at the end of the day. And that means they want to invest in companies they know that will succeed. So that maybe means they're looking for um, founders who have been successful in the past or that look like founders who have been successful in the past. Or they're looking for um, markets that have traditionally done very well. But now we're seeing these trends into industries, especially, but founders as well, who look different from what's been successful in the past. I mean, for example, I would say uh, crypto, NFTs, yep. you know, that's an industry that's totally new, but we're realizing we can be successful if we take these really big risks, even though it means getting comfortable with uncertainty a bit more. 
So that is definitely the biggest mistake. Don't invest out there. Do not just invest in things that you've seen before. It's not going to be successful. It's not going to be game changing. Um, for entrepreneurs, it's a really good question. I think the most important thing for entrepreneurs at the end of the day is your team. And so invest entrepreneurs, of course, you need to have a lot of confidence in yourself and you need to feel that you can go out there and do it on your own. But every entrepreneur needs someone they can depend on, whether that's their family or an incredible co-founder or an incredible early team. So I really encourage entrepreneurs to not just think about the tech, not just think about the business, not just think about the investors, but think about who you're going to be talking to six months from now when you're running into big problems or who you can rely upon. Um, so that's a little bit on the softer side of things. I think. No, I love, I yeah. have to just jump in and say that yes, I love that do. you say that. Whenever I see slide decks, I'm always like, please put your team slide to the front. We want to see who the team is. Why are you the right team to solve this problem right now? And that looks different for every team. So I love that you highlighted that. That's a big yes. one. And I'll throw it back to you as well. Like, are there things you're seeing on the banking side from entrepreneurs or from investors that you're saying, mm, please don't do that or great, what a successful idea? Yeah, I would say the number one thing on the founder side that I see is almost founders sometimes putting up barriers that may not exist. So anyone could open a bank account with us. You don't have to have, you know, all your ducks in a row yet, you know, you have to officially be incorporated, but you don't need, you know, millions of dollars in funding. And we're here to help with all of that. So I think sometimes as we think about these milestones that on the banking side, people may assume, oh, I didn't know I could work with SVB at mm -hmm. this stage. I, you know, I love working on the early stage. Some of my founders are, you know, repeat serial entrepreneurs to maybe a first time founder out of college. And we're here to help take you through that journey. So don't limit yourself by saying like, like oh, I think I'm too early, you know, definitely reach out to us and we'll guide you. And there may be things we can do to get you to where you need to be to start that relationship. So I would say, don't count yourself out. And then on the investor side, one thing I've been really excited about is people making you know, investments all over the country. And so thinking about different ecosystems and, you know, the investors who had previously only invested in New York or Boston are now able to meet entrepreneurs all over. So I'm excited to see how that's going to change the overall industry in the next few years as well. Totally. Yeah. And so as we're wrapping up here, I just want you to give just some few takeaways, you know, for people on that founder investor journey. It's not easy. I applaud all of you who do it. It's something that, you know, takes a lot of, you know, emotional energy every single day. And so what advice has really throughout your career grounded you, rooted you in being excited to continue this type of work? That's that's a really good question. And I think it's really important that we talk about how hard these industries are. Um, there's two things, and I'll start with the one that I haven't talked about much today. When I was earlier in my career, first starting in venture, I got this piece of advice from a mentor. He said, as you get older, you don't necessarily know more. You just get more comfortable with knowing less. That was so impactful for me as someone who was looking at everyone around me thinking they know something I don't there's there's something I'm missing I, I don't know what I'm doing here I had so much imposter syndrome that advice made me relax it let me throw off some of that weight and some of that burden and just say I'm not going to know everything and that's okay I'm going to share what I do know and I'm going to take advantage of that but I'm also not going to be afraid to, to not know something and, and to face uncertainty. So that was incredible advice. Um, the second thing I'll say, I say it over and over again, it's all about community. It's all about people. Uh, this is a long and can be a lonely journey. You could be a sole investor. That doesn't mean that you don't invest alongside other people and you don't work with them and you don't use them to think about um, companies and ideas and as a support system. The same thing is true for entrepreneurs. Uh, it's an incredible 
lifestyle and an incredible journey to be a sole entrepreneur. Um, but that doesn't mean you're doing it alone and it doesn't mean you should do it alone. Build a support network around yourself. Um, I'm starting to hearing this term pop up. One of my best friends says it, founder friends, get your founder friends. Um, this, this network is gonna be with you for forever. And so I really encourage people to make a concentrated effort to build up that community around themselves. No, that that's the perfect segue into closing here. And if you, you know, are thinking about what's the best way to start with that network, Black VC is here to do it. So definitely reach out to them, reach out to your friends at SVB. We're also here to help. And I just want to say thank you so much, Sydney, for spending time with us today and to the Afrotech conference and Afrotech team. I'm always excited when it's this time of year, even though it's been virtual these past two years of, you know, how impactful these conversations are. And I'm so excited to be working in partnership with you on this journey and you know can't wait to be here next year and give an update on all the amazing things that we were able to accomplish so thank you so much yeah thank you so much Vanessa thank you Blavity I'm really excited to be here